Hey everyone, it's Boss Camera 98 here once again, and today I have another tutorial for you guys. The last one I did was how to customize your Google Chrome theme, the web browser, and this one is something I wanted to do, and I actually found out like I don't know a little more than a week ago, is how to get custom firmware on your PSP 1000, 2000, 3000, and PSP Go. Now I'm not sure if this works with the PSP E1000 model. So, you can try it in the same process, it's the same design, so I assume it's going to work, so I'm not sure, but I'm, it, it's probably going to work. I don't think, the only difference is like the physical appearance, but this is how to get custom firmware on your PSP that's on official firmware, that's running official firmware 6.60, and I didn't think that custom firmware was available for this until I found it, so. What I'm gonna do is let me open up the desktop. I was just showing you the Metro user interface from Windows 8. So let's open up the web browser. I'm gonna be using Google Chrome. You can use any which whichever one you want. And obviously you'll need a PSP. Otherwise this is a useful useless video. And you need a micro USB cable to connect your PSP to your PC. So there. are there's a number of things, well actually there's only one thing. It's a really simple process by the way. But if you want to know where to get the custom firmware, I'll show you right now. And if you're not on 6.60, you might as well update and then get the custom firmware. Because you'll still be able to run it and then you'll get all these, you can, running custom firmware will allow you to run emulators such as a Super Nintendo emulator, a Game Boy emulator, That's, those are the ones I have on my PSP. I play Super Mario World, I play Mega Man X, all that stuff, and I gotta allow you to run PS1 games, which I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do a tutorial on that when I have time. So, let me show you where to get the custom firmware, so hold on, let me type it in really quick. So what I searched was Wololo. This is the guy who developed HBL, aka Half Byte Loader, which loads your uh, emulators, your homebrews, without the use of custom firmware. But um, he also has links to custom firmware. So what you want to do? Open up his we his website and go to PSP custom firmware. Now, obviously, the new Xbox got revealed. Anyway, so you have custom PSP custom firmware for dummies. Go all the way, well, not all the way down, but you'll have a number of links. Now, these are all links to specific PSP models. These are all the models. E1000, this may be the same. I'll look into that later. But these are the same process. I've tried, this is my, I, my friend has this, and I've tried it. It does work. The one I'm going to be using is the PSP 2000. Let's open that, and he has tutorials and the links. He has three. He he summarized how to get it in three easy steps. So, kudos to this guy. So he, the links you want to be looking at are these two right here: the official firmware 6.60 and Pearl Custom Firmware latest version, which runs on 6.60. Now, if, you do, if you're already on 6.60, avoid this link. You don't need it at all. Now, you're going you're gonna to need this one. So what you want to do is open it up. And it'll take you to a downloads page. Go down, scroll down, until you go to down, get to the download link. It's a direct link to googlecode.com. Just click on it, and it'll automatically download the file. Now I I automatic I set it to automatically open with Internet Explorer. You can if it's your first time, then it'll give you the choice what to open it with. Now we what you want to do is um save it not to your PSP. Save it somewhere other than your PSP. So I save it to a folder that I created under under my documents called Emulator Stuff, and I kept it here these are different I don't know why I have three of them these are the same it's the exact same thing so I'm not gonna save it since I already have three copies of it or three yeah three copies of it so once you have that save to your destination 
you're gonna need one program to actually get that get that open like in the correct you don't put it okay you know how mine was opens automatically with Internet Explorer well you're gonna want to change that so you want to you don't want to automatically transfer it as it is to the PSP so you want a program called 7-zip and there's another name for it I don't know but 7-zip um, seven is an easy it's easy to download completely safe no viruses or anything like that if I say it's okay then trust me because I'm really finicky about what I download because I've gotten a virus on a computer on my dad's computer before and ever since then I've been really careful about what I download and where I get it from so if you want to download it just type it in 7-zip in the Google search bar this is it's built into this since, since I'm using Google's web browser open up the official link it should be the first thing that shows up open it and it have two versions one for the 32-bit operating system and the 64-bit operating system now if you don't know what version you have you can go to my doc not my documents my computer which I have a pin right here but you can go to file explorer computer and from here right click properties I'm sorry if the camera's shaking where is Vita I'm holding with my left hand and I'm right next to system type it'll say 64 bit operating system you can't highlight apparently time x64 based processor so this um, indicates that you'll need a 64 bit download you need, you'll need the 64 bit version so I already have it let me download it anyway now it'll take you here don't worry about that it's already downloaded and you'll go through many many processes steps and my north internet security said it's safe it is and then it'll bring you the wizard let me i can't see my mouse there it is click next this uh Yeah, just keep clicking next, I think. Yeah, you would want to keep clicking next. I think this is only showing up because I already have it. Uh, with I already have it downloaded. But just keep, keep, keep clicking next. And if you have any questions on the setup, just ask me. Put in the comments below. I'll respond. I, I'll respond faster than I usually do. Sorry if I don't respond at all, usually. But yeah, I think this is because I already have it installed. It's this is what it looks like the program. So let's just close out of that and just click interrupted. What? Yeah, I already have it. Doesn't matter. Uh, we're gonna close out of this. So once you have that installed, open up my no a file explorer. Go to the pay the the um place you saved the custom firmware. Now these are all the same things, so what you want to do is right click it, then go to right below open, 7-zip, and then open archive. This is what you want. So go to um, open up the PSP folder, game, and you'll have three folders now. You'll have CIPL underscore flasher, fast recovery, and pro update. Now completely ignore the first file. And the second two are the ones you need. So once you so just highlight them, extract them. Now this is where you need your PSP. So let me get mine out. Mine's charging. This is my PSP. Turn it on. And you need a micro USB cable. And in this case, I'll be using my. Well, which I dropped it. Um, I'll be using my PS3 controller charger. Let me plug it in actually. Hold on. Yeah, the Call of Duty theme. I love Call of Duty. Call of Duty Ghost looks amazing. Well, it looks pretty cool. It's gonna be better than Black Ops 2, obviously. So connect it. Connect your 
PSP V USB cable. Hold on, let me do that. And then it should automatically go into USB mode. So once that's done, you want to extract this, continue where you left off, go to all the way down, computer, removable disk, PSP, game, and this is where you want to save it now. I already have Pearl Update and Fast Recovery. Now, this is where you would put it. Click OK and then click OK and then it'll extract it there. I'm not going to do that since I already have it. So once you do that, it'll be on your PSP. Now let's, let's go to my PSP. Let's get out of USB mode. And then once you have that, it'll look like this Pro Update and Pro Fast Recovery. So that's it. Uh, oh, wait, no. Actually, you're not even in custom firmware yet. What you want to do is run Pro Update. Let's see if it's actually going to work. Uh, mine's already on custom firmware, so I, I don't know if it's going to be the same, if it's going to look the same. You can see my Vita? My PS Vita? Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Um, you can. I don't know if you can see the second line says press X to launch. CFW aka custom firmware, press X. And then press X again to start it. And wait for it. And voila! You have custom firm. You officially have custom firmware for your PSP. That's on that's running 6.60 official firmware firmware. Now one thing you need to keep in mind. Every time you turn on your PSP after it, every time your PSP shuts down completely, if it's if it's in sleep mode, that's different. If it's shut down completely and you turn it on, you get the Sony Computer Entertainment intro. First of all, after you update, after you run this, you don't need it anymore. But I'd keep it. I keep it just in case. But you can if you want. You don't really need it. But every time you boot up your PSP, you have to run Fast Recovery. Otherwise, if you want to run a homebrew, this is what's going to show up. Oh, crap. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. I don't know. Okay, once you launch it for the first time, it'll work. Now, I don't need this. Crap, it's not opening the... Okay, hold on. Let me get out of this. Exit Super Nintendo emulator. Okay, that was just unexpected. I forgot about that. But... It'll say that this game cannot be started, the data is corrupted. Now, don't panic, just run fast recovery and that's all you once that once you run run once you have run this software, it'll take you back to the X and B screen, go to memory stick and run whatever homebrew you want after running this. Now if we ran pro update, it'll work. You don't you won't have to run this, apparently. I just turned on my PSP. So, otherwise, it will. Let me actually show you what it'll, sh what it'll look like. I know. I mean, I know you probably get what I'm saying, but I just want to show you just, just to be sure. Cause I've seen tutorials, and sometimes they're not really clear. I don't want. I, I just want to show you what pops up, but it'll, it'll say it's corrupted. So, memory stick, run SNES, not XTYL. This is what's going to show up. Now run either of these two. Just run fast recovery. It's an easy. It's faster. That was fast recovery. If you didn't see that, and then it'll just bring up the PSP logo. And it'll bring you back here just to run whatever homebrew. This is the Game Boy Color. Game Boy Advance. This is original Game Boy also. And then Super Nintendo. So let's run that. And yeah, it works now. So I really hope this tutorial was helpful. And if it was, please drop a like and subscribe. Share my videos. And yeah.
I'll see you guys next time. And next tutorial I'll try to do next week. Right when school ends. Mine ends on next Thursday. So I'll try to do the tutorial on how to get EPS, EPSXE running on your computer. Which is the PS1 emulator. It looks like that. I have uploaded a video if you haven't seen that I'll link it in the description. Anyway, I hope that you found this video interesting. This is 15 minutes already. So anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye.